Hello and welcome back to this RepFred video. On this video we are replacing a faulty ALPS type volume potentiometer. The amplifier is suffering from dropping out of the left channel which is being caused by this pot. I've used this amplifier daily in my office and when it drops out I have to wiggle the volume knob or adjust the volume. This then helps for a bit but it drops out again not long after. I did initially clean the pot as best as I could in a previous video with the amp but as it's pretty well sealed I could only do so much when cleaning it. It helped for a while but obviously didn't fix the issue so this is why now we have to take it out and replace the whole unit. The amplifier in question is a high-end Sony F670 ES amplifier. So the first thing I had to do was to remove the lid, six screws on the top and two on each side. This then could be lifted off to reveal the interior components. Now inside the first thing that's got to be removed is a side brace which is two screws which need to be taken out and then this part can be lifted out. The next part that needs to be removed is the electrical connection for the board which holds the potentiometer and then the small part which braces the circuit board to the rear board on the amplifier. Once those parts are removed we can then undo the rod for the volume knob. This is two Allen grub screws. There is also another push button rod that needs unclipping upwards off of the switch. Then the only thing left to remove is two screws which hold the section on the amplifier mainboard. It can then be lifted upwards to remove the part we need to work on. Be careful as you lift as there is push fit pins at the bottom joining the boards. So now we have this section removed we can look at getting it ready to replace the pot. We first need to remove the metal bracket, this is held on with a nut and two screws. Now finding the direct replacement pot I had issues getting like for like, I ended up having to change it for a slightly different rated ohm unit. The original was a 60k ohm and the replacement is a 50k ohm, but it still had a dual channel pot for left and right. So I'm now going to remove the original potentiometer using the soldering iron and the solder sucker tool to free the unit. I always find the solder sucker tool removes the solder much more efficiently and ideal for this type of job. So now that all the solder is removed and the unit's free we can now pull it off of the circuit board. Just take care when you do this that there's not any solder still joining that could potentially cause damage when you pull it off. So now I'm just going around cleaning up the area just making sure there's no solder going over the holes to make it easier when we push the new potentiometer legs in. Now the new potentiometer can be fitted and we can get it soldered in place. Making sure the potentiometer is fitted up correctly against the board before soldering. Now I didn't actually show this part but I had to cut down the shaft end on the pot before connecting it to the volume control rod. It was slightly too long meaning the volume knob at the front would be sitting out too far. I only had to take off about 4mm, just enough so it would sit correctly at the front. So now that the soldering is all done and the board's ready to go back in, we can fit the bracket on first. So again, that was just one nut and two screws. So basically now it's just a reversal of what we did to remove it all. So the first thing that we need to do is push the board back into the bottom board. Be mindful for the bottom pins which push into the main circuit board. Then to fit the small bridge connection which is just pushed on. I'm just going to make sure the main knob control lines up okay and then I'm just going to put the two screws back in to hold the main bracket onto the circuit board. Now that's done we can clip the bottom switch rod back in place. The last thing to do to get it connected up is just to screw these two allen grub screws which hold the volume control rod in place onto the potentiometer. Now when you do this you obviously need to make sure that you've got it lined up correctly on the front for the position that the potentiometer is in so I just set it to the lowest volume on the potentiometer and also on the knob. And now just making sure that the movement's all okay. 
and then we can move on to fitting the side brace bar back in place which is held on with two screws. So at this point we're almost finished putting it back together. There's just this side brace to finish doing and then the case lid has got to go back on and once we've done that we can take it for a quick test and make sure everything's working okay. So now that it's all back together, I've just set it up now ready, just so we can go through and do a quick test of the system, make sure it's all working okay, make sure there's no issues with the volume. So as you can see from that brief test, there's no issues with balance, there's no issues with sound dropping out. So that's another successful repair. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video, it's really appreciated. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.